boost. Okay, so let's look at the passive aggressive algorithm. So as I said, it's an online algorithm. The, uh, you want to use it when you have a big stream of data. Documents fall in one by one. You get labels for each document and you want to learn on the fly. So the good idea is imagine that you're listening to the entire Twitter 24-7, every single tweet, and you're trying to predict something about these tweets. Now, uh, this is something that you will never be able to store or keep in memory, right? Uh, but so you need an algorithm that basically gets an example, learns from that example, and throws it away. So um, that's, that's the idea. So uh, how does PA work? Uh, so you initialize your weight vector to zeros, so, uh, and you have a zero for every term in the vocabulary. And then uh, you look at the stream of data. You get a new document. It's a, it's a vector over the vocabulary. Uh, so use whatever sort of preprocessing you have. So convert it to a vector, apply TF-IDF weights, normalize it to unit length. Normalizing to unit length is actually critical for, for the version that of the algorithm that I'm showing. Um, and then uh, you can, if you need to make a prediction, you just multiply it by your weight vector and see if it's positive or negative, right? So in the beginning, it's just going to be zero because uh, you haven't learned anything yet. Uh, but later on, uh, you'll get a prediction. And then sometime later, right, um, you're going to observe the true class of the document. And that's why, and it's either plus one or minus one. So the document is either positive or negative. <clears throat> so you want to use that true label, you want to use that y, to make your weight vector better. Right? And uh, what does it mean to be better? Well, basically what we want is we want that if the document was positive, so if y was plus one, we would like to have the dot product bigger than plus one. And if it's negative, we would like the dot product to be smaller than minus one. So we want to have that gap of one around the decision boundary, right? So we want all the positives to be here, all the negatives to be uh, there, like that, right? And we, want, we really want nothing in that buffer zone between minus one and plus one. So this axis is the dot product. It's the similarity uh, between the document and, uh, and the weight vector, right? And, that, and that's our buffer zone. <clears throat> okay. Now, um, so this is what we would like to enforce. But what happens if uh, what happens if that doesn't happen? So suppose our document is uh, positive. So y is plus one. If our document scores on the left side of the decision boundary, then the prediction is obviously wrong, right? So we want to penalize that uh, decision, and we want to change the weight. If our document falls into that region, we want to penalize it as well, right? Not because we classified it wrong. We actually classified it correctly. It's positive, uh, but because it's too close to the buffer zone. And then if it falls here, then it's fine. And in this case, we don't actually want to change W. So how can we do that? How we can encode? How can we encode that? Um, we can note that if we take these two equations and multiply them, both sides of them, by Y, we get the same Thing, right? So both of these equations, you can just represent them as that. y is either plus 1 or minus 1. So if y is plus 1, you get d transpose w is bigger than plus 1. If y is minus w, you get minus d transpose w less than or equal to minus 1 uh, times minus 1. So the, when you're multiplying by a negative 1, this is going to flip. So you're going to get greater than or equal to plus 1 again. Right? So this equation captures uh, both of them. So that's what we want to enforce. Now, how do we enforce it? Well, we, uh, we compute a loss function, right? So basically, we would like that product, d transpose w times plus or minus 1, we want that to be over 1, always, for all the examples that we get, right? So if we have something that is smaller than 1, we're going to take that as a loss. If we have something that is uh, one or bigger, then we're going to ignore it. So that's what this max represents. If you try to draw it, that's what it kind of looks like. Right? So if you land on this side of the boundary, then d transpose w for a positive example would be bigger than one. Right? So uh, you want to have a loss of zero. You don't want to have a negative loss in that case. Um, so you don't want to do anything with a vector. Uh, in this case. But if it's smaller than one, so if it falls into this too close range, or if it's on the other side of the decision boundary, then you want to penalize it. And you penalize it by how far off it was, right? You want it to be at plus one, and it was at d transpose w, right? So you take that, the difference between them, as the penalty, right? So uh, what do you do then? Uh, you just take this penalty L that you've computed, 
and update the weight vector by adding a small proportion of d, that's the example that you received, the vector that you received, to the weight vector. And you're going to weigh it by the loss, right? So the loss tells you how far away you are, and we'll see what effect this has. Uh, and y is basically plus 1 or minus 1. So if, if it was plus 1, this means that I had uh, a positive document and I didn't score high enough. So I want to take the weights in that document and make the weights in my decision boundary higher for those same words, right? right? So next time my document score scores higher. And it's the opposite if the document was negative. Right? Uh, if, that's, uh, if that's not totally clear, uh, here's an example of what happens in 2D, right? I have a vocabulary, two words, dog and cat, some positives, some negatives. So this might be my weight vector, and it's separating the positives and negatives nicely in this case. Uh, weight vector, decision boundary that corresponds to it, always perpendicular, and the margin around it, the buffer zone. Right? A new document comes in, it's negative, right? so what happens in this case? It's on the wrong side of the boundary, so I'm going to have a massive penalty. Uh, in fact, it looks like it's, uh, so it's scoring a plus one, and it should be getting a minus one. So, so it's going to be a big change. L is going to be uh, two, right? Um, <clears throat> in this case, uh, because d transpose w is plus 1 times minus 1, so 1 minus, uh, minus 2, oh, it's minus 1. Yeah. OK, uh, so uh, let's see. So what does that update look like? Right? d was a vector, right? so that's the vector that corresponds to d. Now we're going to take that vector and subtract it from vector w, because y is negative. Right? So what does it look like? Uh, it looks like that. I'm going to take d, right? Um, I'm going to be subtracting it from w, so I'm, uh, so that's that's going to be my new uh, that's going to be my new weight vector, and that new weight vector will correspond to a new decision boundary in the space. Now, um, what's interesting about the PA algorithm is uh, this part: the way it's using the loss as effectively the learning rate. Right. All gradient algorithms do that. They get an example, they compute uh, the derivative, which is usually related to, uh, to the document that you receive, and, you, and they add or subtract some amount of that from the weight vector. But they usually define something called the learning weight, right, which is how aggressively you subtract or add vectors together. And here, uh, there's actually a formula. Right? You're, you, you're just using the loss itself. So why does this make sense? Well, it makes sense because it basically uh, it ensures an interesting property of the algorithm. So look at what look what's happening. Assume that it wasn't perfect, right? So assume that the loss was not zero. What does this mean? This means that the dot product between the document and the weight vector was short of what it should be, right? So assume that the document was positive, right? It should have scored over. Uh, at, it should have gotten a plus one or higher, and it's gotten some number that's smaller than that. And L is the difference between what it should have gotten and what it did get. Right? So L, the loss, is how short it fell off the target. Right? So what happens once we recompute the weight vector? We had our old weight vector. And the way to get the new one is to add YLD to it. Right? So the new dot product is going to be just that. And now we can factor that out. So we have our old dot product, d transpose w, plus y times ld transpose ld. Right. <clears throat> oh, so ld transpose d. Um, so now this was our old dot product. That's the guy that was short by y. And what we have here is we have that old dot product plus y times l times d transpose d. Now, what is d transpose d? All of our vectors are unit length. So it's the same thing as a cosine. So d transpose d is just 1. Right? So what you get is just d transpose w plus y l. And the definition of l, that was how far short d transpose w was of where it should have been, the y. Right? So the new dot product is going to be exactly y. Right? So what is the algorithm doing? Basically what it's doing, when it's getting a new example, and that example wasn't perfect, it didn't classify it perfectly. Right? So if it's positive and the dot product was smaller than plus 1, 
it moves the weight vector just enough to make the new dot product exactly plus one. Right? So it moves it just enough to be perfect for the example that it's just seen. Yeah. This only works on data. Perfectly separable data. Yeah, and as I said, that okay. So there are uh, there are extensions of this for non-separable data. Uh, um, it, it just it gets a little bit hairier, not much. Uh, no, no, not really. No, we don't. Um, it's it's a little bit different. Um, so I'm, I'm not actually going to cover it. Um, uh, so that, uh, that's why it's called aggressive, right? Because at each example, if it's not classifying it correctly, it's going to move the weight vector just enough to, uh, to, make, to make the decision perfect. So that's the aggressive part. Now the passive part is if the product was OK, then you didn't do anything. So it's, it's, it's a lazy algorithm. If it sees an example and it already classified it correctly, it was bigger than uh, plus one, it doesn't do anything to the weight vector. Okay. So, so it, this is always correct to, for the last example that you have, uh, that you have seen. Right. And um, I guess in practice, and this is actually related to your uh, question, so uh, the hinge loss can get unbounded, right? Uh, by the way, plus one, minus one, you can always enforce it because this has no constraint on the size of W. W can get arbitrarily large. So as long as there is a tiny separation between the positives and the negatives, you can enforce the constraint that uh, it's bigger than plus one and smaller than minus one because W is unconstrained in any way. Uh, but what that means is with large weights in W, your loss function can become arbitrarily large. And that can lead to certain instabilities, particularly when the data is not nicely uh, separable. So in practice, what you often do is you, uh, you cap the loss function. So you introduce a constant C. And here, when you're computing the loss function, you, uh, if, it's, if, if L was bigger than C, then you just cap it at C. So that's what your new uh, loss function um, is going to look like. OK. Now, um, so uh, that, that was a uh, question. Does it to the case? I'm sorry? Does it to the case? So it's yes. Yeah, I understand. So, uh, so the question is, does it do anything with previous data? No, it does not. It is a streaming algorithm. The assumption is you cannot keep the previous data in memory. Right. So really, the assumption is you're getting a million tweets a second. So, uh, so it sees an example, does a tweak, throws it away. Okay. 